Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. As we get together to get into the word, um, I, I guess I have a question. So I have a question before we get into the word. So who can go to the grocery store and not take a list? Scott? Really? No list at all. And you get home and you got what you need. And more, and more, right, and more, okay. And, and more, yeah, so Scott? Okay, no, that, can, that don't count then, you can't raise your hand. Yeah, and that doesn't mean you call, that doesn't mean you can be on your phone to find out what you need, right? Yeah, I always like it when I get up to the cashier at Walmart, because that's typically where I shop, and she goes, did you find everything you need? I usually say, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe so, but I'm a list person. You know, I, I cannot, I have, I, and I'm a, I'm a planner. I'm a planner, I'm a list person, and not, you don't have to be, okay? Don't, no condemnation if you're not, I just was curious. <sighs> Hallelujah, yeah. When I was young, in college, I went to a um, restaurant um, in Los Angeles, and uh, my sister took me, and, and uh, it was a steakhouse, and there was probably 13 in our party, and the waitress walks up, and she, what would you like? And she takes all of our orders, does not write anything down at all. And this, this, this particular restaurant is known for this, and I've been to one other restaurant that has done the same thing, and I was always amazed how in the world can they do that? Well, as I was developing my thought process on, um, on this subject, I thought, I wonder if they had a microphone in the back. I wonder if I was all impressed with this thought process that long ago. I don't think so, because I mean, so this would have been, uh-oh, let's see, how old am I? Yeah, yeah, 50 years, I don't know, let's see, no, not quite, 40-something, 40, this would have been 40-something years, so, um, yeah, so anyway, so they probably didn't, I mean, we didn't have, did I have a computer then, let me think, no. yeah, yeah, 40 years ago, did we have computers, Kelly, uh, we didn't have cell phones, no, we had pagers, right, we had pagers, yeah, David had one in his car. He had to be rich to have car phones, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. So, but, but, but really, I mean, when you think, when I think about all the time, um, so when's the last, has anybody lost something within the past month and they still haven't found it? You've lost something, you're still looking for it, actively looking for it, and you haven't found it. Okay, so that's five people. Say that again. If they live in the same house, it applies. No, 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 no. You have lost it. Yeah, you have lost it. No one else lost it for you. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, that's a month. What about a year? 
Anybody lost something, you're still looking for it, and it's been a, and it's been a year. So, Emma, what, what is it? Do you mind me asking? You don't remember what it is, but you know that you've surely lost something, and you're still actively looking for it, but you don't know where it is. Anybody else? Marbles. I have, there's some in the kids' room you can have and take home, right? So... Um, that being said, and this is, this is a little bit about our message today, but uh, you, you'll see where this kind of goes in. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this time to share in your word, Father. We thank you and honor you and glorify you not only with our presence, Father, but we come to you today for a word for each and every one of us that's unique and special to whatever it is that you would like to tell us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So turn over to Deuteronomy 6. <clears throat> And I, this is going to be in the um, new, oh, that's last week. Let's see, when did I, oh, this is a month ago. David, wow, David left it up here. Okay, well, we'll just stick it underneath. Um, Deuteronomy, New King James, Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 12. Hallelujah. You know, every day we do things without giving any thought to it, all right? We brush, get up in the morning, brush teeth, maybe have breakfast, definitely put on the coffee, for those who drink coffee, right? You put on the coffee, right? Um, every evening you come home and you, you know, you turn on the TV or you go feed or you, you know, you just, you have these things you just do, right? It's just things that we do every single day. We get, we do them um, just because they're part of our day and we really don't give much thought to it. We just know we need to do it. And so, um, I want to talk about how we live our lives doing the same things over and over and over again without realizing it. And maybe you don't, but I really have been taking a look at this and, uh, in my own life. And so, if you ever check, you know how Facebook, does it, okay, who doesn't Facebook? Okay. Is your partner Facebook to somebody in your house? Maybe Okay, so I keep, David doesn't Facebook, okay? He doesn't watch football, and he doesn't Facebook, and we still love him, right? Okay, so, uh, but I can usually keep him up to date. You know how you check, and on this day will come up, right? On this day a year ago, on this day seven years ago, on this day, you know, and um, sometimes you see a photo, and um, my, mine always includes food or coffee, Always, always does. And um, it, it's not necessarily from the same cafe because I, I travel quite a bit, right? I, we travel for ministry. We travel for, for downtime. And so whenever Israel comes up or, you know, somewhere I've traveled to do ministry with David, if we're back east at a roping or something, um, or out on California, California with the grandkids uh, five years ago came up. I was like, oh. You know, and those memories kind of come flooding back. And um, sometimes they're of, you know, like I said, mine always seem to include food. And um, I'm, al I'm always wondering, you know, I don't wonder about why I take pictures of food. I just like to do it. Um, that's another post for another day. Anyway, Aristotle says it's just a habit, right? I pick up my phone and I see what's going on, right? Check things out. What's going on in life today, in my friends, my Facebook friends' life, you know? Because otherwise, I get to work, and then I'm just like, that's it, right? For those who go to work nine to five or whatever it is, you get in, and you just go through your day. You've got all these lists of things you know, you, you, and you hopefully prepared for something, right? Um, but maybe not. Maybe you just show, you have one of those jobs where you just show up and you just do your job. You know what your job is. You don't tell anybody else what to do. Curtis, I called Curtis on my way in today, and <clears throat> he's looking for a job, another job, and uh, for his future. And um, he says, you know, I really want a job where I don't manage people. I really do. And I think to myself, my whole life seems to have managed, we manage something, right? We manage ourselves, we manage our children. Some of you manage your spouse. Yeah. 
I'm with you, Christy. I'm with you there. Right? Right? So, you know, we, we, we just, we, you know, if everybody just did, if everybody drove, right, used their blinkers, paid attention to the lights, how much easier would your life be? Right? Yep, show up to work. Everybody shows up to work. That's always a bonus. Right? Everybody does their job. You're not having to do somebody else's job, right? And so within the Word and within our Christian lives, our Christian lives, this is all real natural I've been talking about, but our natural lives and our spiritual lives very closely connect. Aristotle said we are our habits. And so I used to always say, you know, you are what you eat. Yeah, you've heard that probably, right? There's a lot of different sayings that are out there. And um, I have um, been looking at a lot of um, business management, because in business, um, you know, managing people, um, I, I obviously don't do it all right all the time, <laughs> because it always seems like I've got something coming up around me. So I will, I'll look and see, you know? And so, um, I had an employee, and, and we were discussing um, managing, co-managing, and she says, you know, I think we should stop trying to figure it out and just let God take care of it. Well, yeah, okay. So, yes, it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds good. But if... But if, you, if they're not listening to God, and they really don't care or know, I'm just putting it out there, I'm not so sure that that works. If everybody is listening to God, so if I, you know, if we were getting, and, and I've had this job before, so you get, everybody prays together, right? Everybody comes to work, they have a morning meeting, they have morning prayer. I loved working for that company. Right, and so you go into certain things, and um, and then you know you can you can start talking about God, and you can interact with God in those situations. But sometimes we need to make decisions that yes, we do need to go to God for. But God puts those things inside of us to know what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Right? We have morals, we have values. Um, I think it was Tanya posted the other day, and I meant to save it. God didn't, God didn't um, promise us that we'd all be happy? No, wasn't you? Okay, I wonder who it was. And so I'm like, huh, whoever it was, I thought of you, so they must have been somebody I, I, I take into account that would give a good word out there, so there you go. Um, and, so, and, and so I thought about it, God doesn't promise us that we'll be happy. And I thought, why would somebody necessarily put that out there? And so I'm reading through the, you know, the whole thought, and, and I kind of took that thought to God. What do you think about that? And he says, well, that choice really is up to you. And so if happiness and joy and contentment are our responsibility, if you're not there, can you use some help with that, maybe? So I had a um, business person that gave these seven ideas uh, and this person is a Christian, and he says, here's seven ideas to break out of ruts we all get stuck in so easily when we're just going through life and doing the same thing every day, and that's pretty much it. And he called that being stuck in a rut. Doing things differently takes intention, and it will not happen unless you do it. And so um, the seven things were make a list of things you do every day, Start with small changes, number two. Number three, go somewhere new. Number four, talk to new people. Number five, join a new club or group. And six, read more. And even though the Bible was in there, we're not going to go through all these seven because I'm just going to stay with number one today. Um, and, the, and, the, and the seventh one was ask why. Ask why. And so... Um, these, these simple things, and so start with small changes. And um, this has actually been something that the Lord put into my heart about a year ago about um, 
getting out of my comfort zone, right? That's what the church calls it. We're gonna get out of our comfort zone. We're gonna do something new. We're gonna do something different. Doing something that you've never done before. Um, and um, with this, but again, like I said, we're looking at make a list of things. In the Bible, um, there are 89 times when God tells someone to write it down, to make a list, 89 times. That's really not a lot of times in all the things that God has talked about. But let's look at it. So Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 12. It says, now this is the commandment, and these things are the statutes and judgments with the Lord, which the Lord your God has commanded to teach, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. So is anybody in a new job? Is anybody looking for a new job? I was glad that Paul's employee didn't raise his hand, right? Raise it right He's just sitting there thinking. Okay. <laughs> it's a new job every day. Um, but if indeed, if, if we are enjoying life, so I'm just going to use the word. Uh, in fact, I'm thinking about as I'm dismantling, I'm, defi- I'm dismantling Christmas, I promise you. It's not going to be here next week. I don't know. But I'm thinking about leaving joy up. I'm going to put it somewhere. I may just leave joy up because I like it. Um, But I'm always looking forward to something. So when I get up in the morning, um, if I'm not looking forward to the day, you have those days? Like you get up and you're like, oh, it's Monday tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, Or is it like, wow, I'm going to, tomorrow's going to be a good day and I'm going to make a choice to make it a good day in spite of all of the numbskulls that you know I encounter tomorrow or not. I work with children, so really I have a lot of joy in there, you know, as far as that goes. Um, but, um, you know, I still have my fair share of numbskulls that I deal with from time to time. Uh, but crossing over to possess, and so I highlighted this in the Bible, that you may observe them in the land, that's us, which you are crossing over to possess. And so in this scripture, he's talking about being intentional and observing what's going on around us because he has something for you to possess. He has something new for you. He has something better for you. Originally, um, the title of this message was There's Always a Better Way. And then that message got left way behind somewhere as God moved into this one. Um, with for me yesterday and it's and my title is we are our habits we are our habits and when I heard that said and I don't follow Aristotle I don't even know what else he had to say about anything but I know he was old and or he if he was still alive, he's this is a long time ago when Aristotle said something I'm sure but it, but it held true it holds true um, and so I am always looking for something new, and this is something that the Lord put into me. Whenever I'm not happy or I'm dissatisfied or I'm, I've got the ho-hums, uh, last week was difficult with no sunshine for like eight days. All of us, including the kids, were just like, I mean, the sun came out, and I was like, the sun came out, everybody should go outside, and they're all sitting there. Yeah, we should do that. So, well, I'll see you later. I'm leaving. I went outside, and I, went, I, just, I just went outside you know, from work, and uh, went out, and I did something, and, you know, came back in, and I took my lunch hour, and I I went outside, I drove around, went ahead, and um, went, and and got out, and got some sunshine, and it immediately really did make me feel better, and so um, I noticed it, too, in my travels last week with people, wherever I went, everybody just seemed to be like, hmm, Right? Nobody's really, everyone's moving kind of slow. There really isn't a fast pace, especially in traffic. I don't know what the deal is, but people could go faster. For those that drive too fast, I'm not talking about that. Uh, Just paying attention. I mean, I'm sitting at the stoplight on Main Street, and I'm going to turn left there, Main and whatever, there's construction going on in town. And I was going to go to Albertsons that way and go back around to the post office. And we're sitting there, and the light turns green, and, the, you know, the arrow comes on, and there's four cars ahead of me, and no one moves. So you know they're on their phone, right? 
No one honks their horn. David's like, blow the horn. <laughs> I, can, I can blow the horn. I'm four cars back. The guy in front of me can't go anywhere. All that's going to do is aggravate him because he's going to be thinking the same thing, you know. And so we all sit there. And so the green light comes and goes. <laughs> We're all still there, right? And uh, the straight, they get to go. So everybody straight ahead gets to go. And then all of a sudden the yellow light comes on just before the red light. And everybody starts to go. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And, and, and I really think it's just people just don't pay aren't paying attention. Um, and I think this is where they get, we get stuck in things and we're just not paying attention to what's going on around us. And that's when spiritually, physically, emotionally, we can get into some hot water. And so that's really what this is about today is, is changing some of those things that are, that are more from habitual to something new every day. Something, change up your routine. Um, for me, it's just drinking tea. So... So it's like, a, instead of coffee, I'm going to get up, I'm going to make me a tea, right? And then I'm going to have my coffee, right? Because I still have to have my coffee. But I've been trying to implement some new things. So when I get up, I've changed my schedule at work. I've changed my routines at work and the things that I do and how I do them. Because as long as you get everything done within the day, you're okay. Now, sometimes there's some emergencies we have to handle, but it's pretty much the other way. And I think with God and our own personal lives, we have a... I'm going to say designated amount of time, right? That to do whatever we're going to do while we're here. And then we have eternity and we don't got to even think about it anymore, right? And so I'm always thinking about that. I'm always thinking about what do I want to do? I don't have a bucket list. Um, I just, every day, putting something new into my life, something to make me happy, to bring me joy, to change the day-to-day -day mundane things that are going on. And it changes my attitude, and it changes my focus, and it brings my focus into what would God have me do. So, of course, that's, all, that's, that's, that's at the front of it, right? God, what would you like me to do today? And I, I can see God, and God has done this with me. He'll go, he'll say sometimes. Sometimes he'll tell me, I need you to do this today. And sometimes he'll go, what do you want to do today, Kathleen? Oh, can I take the day off? Because <laughs> that's always what I want to do. All right. Um, so crossing over to possess. So back on that. Are you, are you moving into something new? I want to challenge every single person in here today that's listening to this message or in the future, if you're listening to this message on the Internet, do something new when you leave here today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Because you may forget, you know, we'll sleep and get up and we just get into the pattern of things. Um, look, look for something new to do in your life. Possess something new. It goes on to say that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. So here we've gone from possessing something and taking this attitude here um, and, and realizing that when we do this, our days, our days are prolonged. That's a good reason, if nothing else. It says, therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you. So here again, we're looking at the things that God has put into place. And so we're not going through the, all the commandments, or we're not going through all the statutes, or we're not going through all the judgments. I believe that everybody that's here, and even though I don't know our new friends personally, um, but you're here, and, and the word, there is word in us. And so there are things that we know that we should be doing for the Lord every day. And whether it's being kind, being nice, sharing, caring, um, telling people about Jesus, right? Um, making sure everybody does, you know, what they're supposed to. Couples excluded, okay? I'm not here to monitor David. Um, he'll tell you different. He will, he will. But I am his help mate. You are their help mates, right? We are helpful. We're not bossy. We're helpful. So whenever, that must be for somebody, because I wasn't planning on throwing that one out there. Okay, so that it may be well with you. When I know that I am 
seeking direction and I'm living my life that I'm in and I'm, I'm doing what I know pleases my Father in heaven and I do things consciously so I, I'm not displeasing, um, then I know that also that it will be well with me. My life will go well, right? And that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. And so... Um, a lot of times I know people equate that strictly with um, the, the little things that God gives us, and I look at it from everything that flows in my life, everything. And so being good. Verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Number five, I highlighted this one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Do, do you feel like you do that? I feel like I do that. I know that I do that. I don't just feel like I do that. I saw somebody else post that um, they were, and, and you hear this a lot, you can't be moved by what you feel, right, because feelings will, but God, and, and, and the person said, uh, well, if that's true, why did God give us feelings? So they are a gauge. For us, our feelings are a gauge. We do, we do pay attention to how we feel. If you don't feel well, you know, how many, we're just going to push through it, people, do I have? We're just going to push through it. Not me. Not me. I'm like, oh, I don't feel well. And I immediately, I, I go into, I am going to feel better mode. I'm not going to just drag through the day not feeling well. Um, that has been a long lesson for me to learn. And even as a business owner, <clears throat> I don't recommend it. Just saying. Um, because what happens is things don't become well, pushing through it, not being proactive in those situations. And so sometimes it is a luxury though, Paul. Hmm? Yeah, like it's Saturday, I'll feel better then. Oh, no, you work on Saturday too, don't you? Oh, only Monday through Friday. Very good. Yeah. Yep. So what if you only had to work Monday through Thursday? Right. Or what if you only had to work Tuesday through Friday? Adding an extra day in there. Would you have to close the shop? Yep. Okay. <laughs> But you know what? That our lives are like that. It's like, okay, we're just going to have to shut down. We can't do anything today because we don't feel well. But making provision and plans and putting things in place to make sure that we're, we're caring for ourselves is an important thing. Who needs to go to the grocery store today? Anybody? Why would you wait for Sunday? I don't know. Bethany, did you work yesterday? Oh, okay, never mind. I won't pick on you then. All right. <laughs> Every time I show up at Sam's Club or Costco, which is once a year, I forget. You never go to Sam's Club or Costco on a, on a weekend. Never. I don't know who those people are, but they obviously work because there's way too many of them out there. So I'm just saying. But again, I make that provision in my life. Now, is that a luxury for me to be able to do that? I do have to adjust my schedule accordingly. And so making sure I don't do that, because it doesn't make me happy when I show up at the grocery store and I can't find a parking space and there's you know way too many people in there. Sometimes I just leave. And then there is, so you know what I'm doing today? Okay, so anybody, anybody auto order already? <laughs> I did. So I'm going to pull up the Hudson Oaks Walmart and I'm going to pull over to that little spot and I'm going to tell them I'm here and they're going to bring all my stuff out. And it didn't cost me anything. It saved me a whole bunch of money. Right? And I start my grocery list on Monday and I book it for Sunday after church. Now, I, this is my deal, just so you know where I'm going to be. If you need me, you can go over there and we can go to Starbucks afterwards, have a cup of coffee. But, and so then I, I plan it. And so I know Sunday after church, I'm going to go pick up my order and all week long I can add to my order. I'm telling you, it'll set you free. You know, if, if you just need to socialize, so you're going to go to Walmart because you need to see people, hey, power to you. But this has been a, a real changing thing for me in, in, my, in my whole life. And Kelly's like, how long have you been doing auto order, Kelly? 
Is it like COVID one or when, before COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Person to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. My dad did it all the time. He'd complain because Bluebell didn't have his right ice cream. But other than that, because then I would go to the store and I would get him the right ice cream because it was there. It just wasn't on the auto order. But, you know, I just, and so if, they, if my choice isn't there, I just choose something else. So they send me a message that I, they could be low on something today. I don't remember what it was. And I just told them to replace it. I don't care what it is. Just, they give you this list. And so I just replace it. And so this is my newest change in my life. I'm just going to tell you. It's a little thing, though. It's not a big thing. But it really is. It makes me happy. It makes me happy to pull up there and have somebody load my groceries for me. And I didn't have to get out of the car in the rain and wind and storm and snow and sleet. I tip them when it's ice day. I do tip the guys when they come out. But <clears throat> it's kind of like... It has expanded my life. So if you don't do it, just try it. Just try it once for me. And let me know what you think. All right. So you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I got that. I got that. Maybe today you're listening to this message and you don't think you got that. Just work on that then. Don't work on any of this other stuff. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. So that's an import, important concept there in itself. Um, we know that out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak, right? So that's a scripture. So um, if it's not in you, it won't come out of you. You shall teach them diligently to your children and you shall talk with them when you sit down in your houses and, you, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. What was the last conversation about someone else that you had with your children? <clears throat> or, or, or your mate. So again, what was the last conversation about someone else that you had with your children? Um, I think it's really important uh, and I wished I, had, I wished I had known this sooner when I was raising my children. I think I shared things, adult things, and things that I was going through. I was a single mom um, when I was younger, and um, that I probably didn't need to share with my children about people, about things, when I get grumpy. Um, even, even my mate, even David, I'm, I'm really working on, just because I'm not happy with somebody, I don't need to come home and just dump that all on him and make him not like them either, right? Um, there's a powerful thought in that, and that is something I've been working on very steadily this year. Now, I've only been doing it for 30 days, so sorry if you were at odds with that before then. But really trying to, because um, it makes me, I'm just going to be honest, it makes you feel better. If you're holding all that in and something's going on in your life, it does make us feel better to get it out there and dump it, right? And so, I, what's that? Therapy, yeah. And, but this, this, is, this is the place where this is what we should be doing with God, though, right? This is something that we should be doing with God. This is what God wants us to do. God wants us to take those types of problems to him and not to other human beings. And I think that this focus, even in what the employee said when she said, well, let, why don't you just let God take care of it and quit working so hard to try and figure it out. Um, and the Lord really ministered when she said that to me. So this was just a week ago that she said this. And ever since then, that thought is the thought that God brought to me. Those times when you want to tell David because you're not happy with how somebody's doing something or what somebody did to you, can you not share that and hurt his heart for you or your, your children getting angry about something that's being done? Or, and this, this crosses a lot of paths, you guys. Talked about the government, the city officials, the, I mean, th this is not just your interpersonal lives, but really sharing that with God and letting God work on that uh, with you, for you. He may tell you to talk to somebody. He may. He may. He may say, you need to recruit another human being 
and so, um, you know, our angels, our, our physical, spiritual angels and our physical angels sometimes are the people that live in our houses, I think, if we look at it right. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And so, of course, these are the words of God, the things of God, the things that should be set before us. Um, they should be something that's easily accessible. We should just be able to close our eyes and be able to see those words, those things that we're working on all the time, those things that God wants for us. Um, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so it talks about this several times in the Bible where things, when you look at writing down, that they're writing things on their doorposts. That he's asking them to write things down so that they don't forget them. And so that's where my whole grocery list thing came from. <laughs> so you don't forget them. Put them on your phone or your Walmart app or whatever. Um, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You shall have wrote things that bless God. Have you, excuse me, have you, this is my own note, have you wrote things that bless God or curse you and others? What are you keeping mental track of? Uh, we all determined that the majority of us know we need a grocery list, right? Or at least some form of, you know, a thought process for that. Um, but sometimes the things that we're, we're holding on to that are in, that really take over our thought process are more negative things than positive things that, seem, that we seem to, the enemy wants us to focus on. Verse 10 says, so it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he has swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, when you have eaten and are full. It's a good place to be, isn't it? Isn't this the land you want? When you look at this in this scripture, so verse 10, and so it shall be. This was a promise that he gave them, but this promises, these promises are for you, right? No? Are they? Are his promises for you? Amen? Amen. His promises, he, they weren't just for them. They weren't just for the, Bible, the people in the Bible. Otherwise, we wouldn't be reading it all the time and going and studying it. His words and his promises are for us. And that's why these things are wrote down. And so when I read this, so it shall be when the Lord your God brings Kathleen into the land of which he has given to me, right? And, and all of these things, things that I didn't do by my own hand, so in other words, uh, when I look at this, I really look at it, yes, okay, we have a part to play in it, so to speak, but here God's telling you that let me set these things up for you, do what I've asked you to do, and these things will come to pass. And so wh whenever I'm at a crossroad or a place where I, I feel um, anxious and in turmoil or sad, um, for no reason. Um, I always look at that because those things will put me in bondage. So will eat, eating too much sugar. Houses full of all good things. And so it really is God is our provider, right? That's where, that's where I'm going with this. It's not about, oh, we're just going to wait for God to just drop all this stuff in us. But recognizing that God is our provider. Are you happy with what you have? If you're not happy with what you have, you won't be happy with what you get. Being content with the things that you have right now and finding, con finding contentment in those things is a spiritual milestone. And so... Um, we talk about it a lot with, with children, and it's not just children of today's age that are just being given everything, okay? It's, it's teaching children or teaching ourselves if we weren't taught that, how blessed we are to have the food we have in our refrigerator, to have the gas we have in our car, to have the paycheck that is coming on Friday, right? Or, or help. 
um, and that it's because of God that these things are possible. Not, not because something I do, even though I have to do something. Does that make sense? Okay, if I've confused you, we'll talk about it afterwards. Um, we forget, oh, verse 12, then beware, lest you forget, and I highlighted this, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of where are you today and where were you five years ago, 10 years ago, yesterday, um, 20 years ago? We could go on, you know. Have, have things been worse before? Ever? Ever? Have, so you've come through something, right? We've come through loss. We've come through death. We've come through despair. We've come, we've come through it before. Nobody wants to go back, I'll guarantee you. Um, I hope not anyway. Um, if you know someone like that, I'm a, I would beware of how much investment your life is in with them. I'm not sure who that was for. Um, <clears throat> lest you forget.
Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that His plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the Word, we realize that the Word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that will be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and, or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry, realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.